Good evening. Uh, my name is John. Uh, I'm a lawyer. Uh, first confession. Uh, what, my second confession. One of my interests is looking at how the law applies to social media. I could talk about this for hours, but tonight I'm going to take you through a complete history of social media and the law in 20 slides. But let me take you back to the time before Twitter, before Facebook emerged from the US college scene, and even before uh, Friends Reunited at the millennium. In fact, back to the normal invasion of Britain in 1066. What we know as the English legal system actually rose from the ashes of the Norman Conquest. And it's about that time that the uh, old system of the hundreds courts, which was a hundred families gathered together in a legal justice system, started to evolve towards what we've got today. And that number of about a hundred is actually quite an interesting number. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard Dunbar's number the theory that the biggest number of social relationships in human brains is really hard to handle, about 150. Which you still see on Facebook today. Obviously, they knew something about that in the, uh, in the Middle Ages. So, English law since then is not a comprehensive list, but it's managed to survive civil war, uh, revolution, industrial revolution, rise and fall of the empire, the computer age, the internet, and social media, I suppose, could be seen as just one of the latest in uh, a long list of those types of challenges. And the funny thing is, there isn't really such a thing as social media at all. And it's, almost this system of law that's evolved since 1066, which we now have to adapt to, to what we've got in front of us. It's a bit like finding all your spanners that are imperial size and all the bolts on a new car are actually metric. And the law's generally been pretty good at dealing with this, but the question really is whether social media is different, uh, the pace at which it's moving is pretty phenomenal. And to be honest, a lot of the lawyers and judges don't really understand it. So in some ways, the law is struggling to keep up, and that can be a bit of a problem for social media users. So copyright, you know, social media is all about sharing content, spreading content around, where does copyright come in? And you can ask that question in the independent newspaper when they put photos and flick their API on their site without checking the licensing and to go into a degree of trouble with photographers. Things like flipboards, a you know, great idea to take content from Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, to put it into a, a sort of repurpose in a social magazine, but is it fair use of the content or is it just infringing copyright? Or the debate that's going on at the moment. Uh, it's also a great way of social media to get sued for defamation. <coughs> Basically, any uh, statement which tends to lower the estimation of someone, the you know, estimation of right thinking people generate, potentially defamation. And as long as it's published and it's untrue, then you can potentially be sued. And social media is great for that because you, know, you can publish instantly, worldwide, and even the usual rule that there's a sort of 12 month limit to when you can be sued for compliance because it's republished every time it's by somebody. So I think there's a need really for reform. There's great uncertainty at the moment. I mean, is social media defamation libel to victim or is it slander which is spoken? Don't really even know that. And maybe there's a question of whether there should be a different standard of social media just to reflect the fact that it's you know, conversational and that. Uh, commenting as well, you know, it's all about commenting on blogs, interaction, engagement, but you know, if you've got a blog, then you can potentially be liable for comments that other people make on it. And even if you actually vet those comments and amounts and moderate them, that can actually make things worse for you. Uh, it's pretty easy to become a social media criminal as well. Obviously, there's the case of Paul Chambers recently, who was convicted of threatening to blow up Robin Hood Airport in a fairly farcical trial. And uh, Kerry McCarthy, as well, the Labour MP, tweeted the results of the postal ballots before the election results were out. And you can question whether it's right that people like Paul Chambers should have you know, lost their jobs and got a criminal record for basically a, a bad joke on Twitter. But it does seem to be the, the position that we're potentially in at the moment. And it's just an example of how the law isn't really keeping up with where social media has got to. So, so you're going for a job interview, and has your employer been looking on Facebook to see what you've been up to? And a lot of them do, but then potentially they're at risk of finding out something and acting on information which will get them sued for discrimination. They find your kind of staff family and decide they'd rather hire somebody else. And even once you've got the employee, life isn't necessarily any easier. You know, if you've got social media policies in place to say what people can and can't do at work, um, you know, are you going to end up in a sort of voter phone video or type of situation where your employee is being impressed for all the wrong reasons? Even if you're buying and selling companies, which is why I do during the day, you've got to be really aware of you know, have they got some social media assets that you want to require, or are those really valuable LinkedIn contacts actually the property of the individuals that work there and not belong to the company at all? So it's a whole other thing you've got to look into. So where is it going next? Um, you know, will the law keep up with social media, or will it be the way around? Will social media revolutionise the law with things like crowdsourced legal advice, tweeting live tweeting from trials? 
you know, when you get access to your move house and you get to find them on Twitter or on the other pages. Uh, so that's probably the most legal round that I've ever covered in five minutes, so please don't take any of this as legal advice. You probably noticed that there are a lot more questions than answers, and all I'm going to say to that is welcome to the world of social media law.